can't just emotionally it's hard to stay living in the same uh, and seeing that person all the time i don't know what to do i mean what am i risking here do like i think that a lot of people probably make a lot of mistakes or don't do certain things for themselves because they fear of the unknown the topic today is what are my rights if i'm leaving the marital home the conversation is going to be about divorce of course and owning real estate and i have david traster here today who's a family law attorney and a real estate attorney and he will be helping us figuring out What's going to happen if you decide to leave the marital home during a divorce? Hi, David. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me back. I'm glad to have you here. There's a lot of questions that are being in our follow-up uh, videos that people want to know. So I'm very grateful that you are willing to spend some time with me and uh, try to put some perspective here and, and help everybody out. So what happens? What are my rights if... I leave the marital home during a divorce process. Do I even have any rights? You do. So question, this is a common one. And as a divorce attorney, we always question clients about leaving the marital home because we don't want to create the impression that the marital home was abandoned. What does that really mean in practical terms? If the, the property is marital, meaning that it was bought during the marriage, it doesn't matter whose name it was bought in. It's a marital property and it should be divided generally 50-50. And one spouse leaves the home. It doesn't mean that they give up their rights to that home. But what it does do is uh, it opens up a couple of different scenarios. One is did they move out and are they still contributing to the carrying cost of the home, the mortgage, taxes? That's one question. If they are, great. Then when the property is divided, there's no issue. If they're not, then, and then one spouse begins to pay all of that, then, you know, at the time of the sale, they might want some additional part to be taken out of the first spouse's share who did not, during who did not uh, contribute. Correct. The other part that it becomes a concern is if, let's say, you abandon the marital home, meaning you leave, right? And you go, you rent an apartment. And then all of a sudden you're like, you tell the judge, well, you know, the judge, I, I moved out. I shouldn't be contributing any to the cost of uh, marital home because I don't live there. And the judge will say, well, it's still marital property. You were contributing to it when you lived at home. If you moved out and you're now renting an apartment, it doesn't substitute for your responsibilities as it pertains to the marital property. So now you have, in the view of the court, you have the ability to pay for both. So that becomes a problematic thing because then people are like, well, if I'm paying for that and I'm paying for my apartment, then I have no money. The courts don't really care about that. Okay. So, so you don't lose your rights, but there might be uh, some kind of an adjustment, whether temporary or at the time or when uh, the property is sold uh, that deals with that. Okay. So... Is there a difference? What if you move out first and then file? Or it doesn't matter if you file first and move or move and file? It doesn't matter. If you move out, it's considered that you've abandoned the marital home. So a lot of times we'll tell clients, don't move out. And they'll be like, well, I can't live there. So maybe go to your parents' house for a couple of weeks. Maybe move in with a relative or a friend for a couple of weeks. You always want to be careful with this kind of, I'm going to go rent my own space while I have financial responsibilities towards the marital home as well. That's when things get a little bit dicey. Okay, I understand this, this is in relation to the expenses that are associated with the marital home. But I'm saying as far Correct. as risking the ownership or division. That doesn't happen, right. Okay, so that, you don't risk the division okay, so it's still there before i file or after i file is not going to make a difference whether or not it's still my home and i'm entitled for 50 percent or not correct 
what you mentioned about the expenses, yeah, it's it's another, uh, you know, subtraction. Unmature going about things. Uh, well, I didn't live there, so why should I pay? And you know, I understand that. Yeah. Okay, so that's I think that's a very important because uh, just thinking about you as the people that are are watching this video and have these questions right uh those are probably some questions that you have in your mind saying well can't just emotionally it's hard to stay living in the same uh, and seeing that person all the time so i want to move out but then it's very hard yeah and then i don't know what to do i mean what am i risking here do like i think that a lot of people probably make a lot of mistakes or don't do certain things for themselves because they fear of the unknown and right away hiring a, an attorney when uh, the clock is ticking for every whatever number of hundreds of dollars per hour for every question and i know like i had a situation not a divorce but i had a situation where i needed consultation and although i tried to put all my questions uh, on a note Pad. before I got there when I left I realized that there was like another 10 questions that I completely didn't know I should ask and then you feel like you know you just just getting information so again really appreciate you taking the time and and helping oh, yeah. educating people together on the subject and um, I think in situation where there's children involved for example it's very hard for a woman, a mom, to leave the home when there's those kind of obligations. Not that I'm saying that the dad doesn't have the obligation, but in general terms, most of the time in a, in a you're, marriage. You're, you're correct. M mo yeah. Most of the time, the, it's the man that leaves the home and the woman stays with the children, right? Okay, so, which brings me to our next video, which you guys must be wondering, how can I get my husband out of the house if he refuses to leave? So make sure you jump into our next video because on that video, we're gonna answer that question with David. We'll see you right there.